Well, today I wanted to produce a, uh, a short video which responds to someone that I consider a friend, John MacArthur. Uh, John said that any deviation from the gospel of grace is a damning lie to be cursed. And I would agree with him wholeheartedly, but I want to have you listen to what he has to say, and then let's make some clarifications. Over the last couple of weeks, you may have read a famous evangelical teacher and radio personality joined the Eastern Orthodox Church went through a ceremony or ritual called chrismation, in which a rag supposedly infused with divine life was placed upon his head and transferred to him. This is an Eastern Orthodox ritual. What does the Eastern Orthodox Church believe about the gospel? Here is Decree 13 from their dogma. We believe a man to be not justified through faith alone, but through faith which works through love. That is to say, through faith and works. End quote. That's what Eastern Orthodoxy teaches. We are not justified by faith alone, but by faith and works. There are about 300 million people worldwide who are in the Eastern Orthodox Church. The sister church in the West is the Roman Catholic Church that has the exact same doctrine, and there are 1.3 billion people in the Roman Catholic Church worldwide. So 1.6 billion people call themselves Christians and believe in a salvation that is a combination of grace and works. That is false Christianity within true Christianity. That is false Christianity teaching a false gospel. It is not to be joined, it is to be cursed. You know, when I heard this clip, I, I thought, you know, I have to do a short video and, and uh, discuss this, this clip because I think it leaves a false impression in the minds of people. Now, I take no pleasure in, in debating John. He is a, he's a friend. I've spent some great days playing golf with him. I've had some very, very meaningful discussions over dinner uh, John is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And I've certainly had him on the Bible Answer Man broadcast. I consider it an honor to have been asked to speak at the dedication of MacArthur Chapel at uh, Master's Seminary. But John's misunderstanding with respect to soteriology uh, ought to be addressed for the sake of the gospel. Now, let, let me make just a few preliminary remarks. I mean, to his credit, I should say that John substantially gets the number of Orthodox Christians right. But those who are familiar with church history are immediately alerted to the fact that Eastern Orthodoxy and Roman Catholicism don't have the exact same doctrine. Uh, not only that, but there are many significant differences between Roman Catholicism and Eastern Orthodoxy. For example, uh, orthodoxy rejects purgatory. Orthodoxy rejects papal infallibility. Orthodoxy rejects the immaculate conception as it was defined at least by Pope Pius IX. And unlike Protestantism, which shares a, a common history and geography with Catholicism, orthodoxy was not part of the Western narrative. What I mean is they, they didn't have a reformation. They didn't participate in the selling of indulgences. And they don't subscribe to such dogmas as, well, as limbo or the celibacy of the priesthood. And let me also provide a little context for what MacArthur mistakes as the rag infused with life that was placed on my head. 
In reality, no rag was ever placed on my head. Instead, during chrismation, or what is known in the Western Church as confirmation, a stole, an epitrachylia, a part of the ministerial vestment, a symbol to ministers of the body of Christ, that they're supposed to live and act solely as faithful shepherds of Christ's flock, uh, was placed on my head. And, and, and you've got to remember that this is in concert with what the Apostle Paul said. I think it was Acts chapter 20 where he said, Keep watch over yourselves and all the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers. Uh, be shepherds of the church of God, which he bought with his own blood. Because I know that after I leave, savage wolves are going to come in among you and they're not going to spare the flock. Even from among your own number, men are going to arise. They will distort truth in order to draw away disciples after themselves. And so be on your guard. And remember that for three years, I never stopped warning each one of you night and day with tears. And I think that's what John is doing. I mean, he really, really cares about the gospel. And I'm glad that he does. So let me make a quick comment on his representation of the orthodox view of faith and works. In context, he is quoting an orthodox writing which says, we believe a man to be not justified through faith alone, but through faith which works through love. That is to say, through faith and works. And that says John, that, he says, is a false gospel. It is not to be joined. It's a gospel that must be cursed. Well, what MacArthur here is quoting is something that was said by a 17th century patriarch of Jerusalem who is simply reiterating what James, the bread of our Lord, says in sacred scripture. Most of you know this text by heart. Remember James, he says, what use is it, my brothers? What use is it if, if someone says he has faith, but he has no works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is without clothing, is in need of daily food, and then one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and be filled, and yet, you don't give them what is necessary for their body. Well, what use is that? Even so, faith, if it has no works, is dead. Because faith without works is by itself. But, of course, someone may counter that, saying, you have faith and I have works. Well, show me your faith without the works, and I will show you my faith by my works. And then James famously says, you believe there's one God or that God is one? Well, you do well. The demons, of course, also believe that and they shudder. But are you willing to recognize, you foolish fellow, that faith without works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works? When Abraham offered up Isaac, his son, on the altar. And so James goes on to say, you see that faith was working with his works. And as a result of the works, faith was perfected. And the scripture was fulfilled, which says, and here uh, James is quoting from the Old Testament. It says that uh, Abraham believed God. And so it was reckoned to him as righteousness. And then he was called the friend of God. You see that a man is justified by works and not by faith alone. Again, that's not me, that's James. In the same way, was not Rahab the harlot also justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For just as the body without the spirit is dead. So also faith 
without works is dead. Now again, I want to emphasize that these are not my words. These are uh, words from the book of James. I, I think I've quoted them correctly. Now we've just passed the Reformation Quinson Tenery, uh, which is the marking of 500 years of debate between Protestants and Roman Catholics respecting their dichotomization of faith and works. And this is a debate that would not, could not so much as have been imagined in the Eastern Orthodox tradition. Indeed, St. Mark the ascetic, he's a guy that is uh, far beyond me, he is said to have memorized the whole of Scripture. He is one whose sermons are regarded as preeminent in the literature of the church. He offers perhaps the clearest statement in early church literature, it's back in the fifth century, that demonstrates that believers are not made righteous by good works, rather that true faith will manifest itself in good works and that without good works, one does not have genuine saving faith. He had a treatise, it was titled, uh, On Those Who Think They Are Made Righteous by Works. And in that treatise, he achieves remarkable balance between Jesus and Paul and James, a balance we desperately need. Let, let me read what he has to say in that treatise. He says, uh, when Scripture says, he will reward every man according to his works, do not imagine that works in themselves merit either hell or the kingdom. On the contrary, Christ rewards each man according to whether his works are done with faith or without faith in himself. And he is not a dealer bound by contract, but God our creator and redeemer. So let me make one more point in all of that. Uh, in light of that, I should note that the uh, the Patriarch of Jerusalem was in the broader context. He was seeking to refute the Patriarch of Constantinople who was attempting to incorporate Calvinistic determinism into Orthodox theology. In other words, in the Confession, MacArthur quotes from, the Patriarch was concerned with Calvin's belief, his belief that God arranges all things by his sovereign counsel. And he does that in such a way that individuals are born who are doomed from the womb to certain death. That some are preordained to eternal life and others, well, to eternal damnation. And accordingly, as each has been created for one or the other of those ends, says Calvin, he has been predestined to life or death. And Calvin, of course, famously also said, God does not only foresee the fall of the first man and in him the ruin of his posterity, but also at his own pleasure arranged it. Now, while it would be imprudent for me to interject myself into intramural Calvinist debates, I content myself here to merely remind everyone watching that God himself says in sacred scripture, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their wicked ways and live. Well, I'm going to leave it at that with a reminder that uh, we should stand together with Christians around the world, united in the essentials of the historic Christian faith. In essentials, unity, in non-essentials, liberty, in all things, charity. What C.S. Lewis talked about when he talked about mere Christianity. And I also want to maybe uh, quote here as well the precious words of Holy Scripture. These are words that I memorized as a brand new believer, and uh, they're always in my memory trace. It is by grace that you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. 
For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. At the end of the day, I'm as deeply committed today as I have ever been to memorize the Scripture, to meditate upon Scripture, and to mine the sacred Scriptures for all their substantial worth. I will also continue to pray for God's richest blessings on John MacArthur. He has a tremendous ministry, and he's got wonderful loved ones, and I, again, continue to keep them in my thoughts and prayers. Uh, I hope we have many, many more years to reach out as he has so wonderfully with his teaching and uh, with his passion. And again, as I said uh, at the very beginning, he is just a great guy. I really like John. And uh, sometimes his bark is worse than his bite. If you ever spend any time with him personally, you'll find that he's a true gentleman. So thanks for listening into this video. I want to set the record straight as always. Do remember uh, that this kind of information you can find on the web at equip.org, on YouTube, on Facebook, uh, the Bible Answer Man Facebook page, and in many other places, I'm sure. Uh, thanks for listening to uh, my, my, my short comments on this very significant issue.